Hey kids, um, so I'm going to probably do a series of different demo videos um, and try to piece them together. I'll see how it goes. I'm going to start with the painting stuff first. I do hope to get outside and do some painting um, in the fresh air since it's nice weather. Um, but right now I'm kind of set up in my basement um, and I have this privacy screen set up so that you can't actually see my husband playing video games or my dog eating her dinner. Um, so I just kind of want to tell you a little bit about my setup and it won't necessarily be your setup, but I do have like a little bit of an easel set up here and that's mostly because like I don't actually have a lot of room on my desk. So, and I do like when I do um, watercolor painting, um, I usually work flat and this is actually my watercolor easel which can tilt flat um, a lot of the time I just sit with my watercolor book on my lap but um, acrylic painting and oil painting I definitely do prefer to work standing up with my easel upright um, so if you do have access to uh, an easel or a stand-up table easel I'll just grab an example of one of those so like one of these things um, then you might want to use that, uh, but you can work flat. It's it's okay. Um, I'm just putting this down. So, um, and another couple things is I taped this to this piece of board here. Um, if you have a piece like a flat piece of board that you can tape it to, or even like a piece of cardboard that you can tape it to, you might want to. You might not want to tape it though. Like I know that. I taped off my one inch border. Um, you might actually want to paint into your one inch border. Again, that's your choice. I have my reference photo taped to my privacy screen. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the stuff that I have. So I have my, uh, my acrylic paints set up on my desk and now you can see why I don't have any room on my desk for my painting. So, um, like, it looks like there's a lot of paint here, but let me just show you my watercolor paints. So yeah, just in comparison to my watercolor paints, I have a lot more colors. But that's because watercolors are a lot, like, you need to, you can travel with small amounts like this in the last few years. So they're a lot more portable. And that's partly why I do so much watercolor painting, is because I do love to do painting outdoors, and I'm seriously too lazy to carry everything set up for acrylic paint. So I'll just put that away now. Um, there are videos on my YouTube channel that show you my um, watercolor kit that I use for um, backpacking with to paint in the, in nature basically um, on plein air. Um, I'm like really nervous <laughs> talking to this video. Super nervous talking to my phone. I don't know why. Um, anyway, I will put this away and then I will show you my acrylic paints. Okay, um, so, um, yeah, if you do hear my voice shaking, it is because I'm bizarrely nervous talking into my phone. I guess that's a sign of a true introvert. So, um, you're probably not going to have access to all these colors. And actually, I've noticed laying these out that I actually gave a bunch of my paints to a student in my advanced drawing class to take home with her to use. Um, so I might actually have to go to the store this weekend to get some some browns, some umbers, or some siennas. But I'll tell you, uh, so I've got three yellows, um, and I've got like a, a cool yellow and a, and a really warm yellow, dark yellow. Um, I've got a, a warm red and then a cool red. So this is an alizarin crimson. Um, and uh, I've been using alizarin crimson since 1982. It's a really useful color. Um, I, for some reason, don't have yellow ochre, which is a fancy name for baby poo yellow. Um, but it is also a really useful color to have. Um, but I do have this Indian yellow hue. Um, and that's Indian because it's from India. And I have some magentas, which I may or may not use depending on which color schemes I use. 
Um, so once I decide on the color schemes that I'm going to use, I will probably put a bunch of these paints away. Um, I have an ultramarine blue, which is a, you know, I've heard some people call it a cool blue. Most people refer to it as a warm blue. This is why color theory gets really confusing because different people say different things. Um, a process blue, which is basically like a, a blue blue. Cobalt blue, which is, it's a pretty universal blue for, um, mixing um, different things. It's the blue that Van Gogh used and he licked his paintbrushes and some people say that's what made him crazy and cut off his ear. I have a Prussian blue. Um, you may have something called a phthalo blue. Um, they're both very similar. People who know a lot about paint get into big arguments about this. Um, apparently phthalo blue is, um, uh, I forget the word. Um, it's more fugitive or less fugitive. I'm totally confused. Anyway, it's more archival. Uh, and then there's Viridian green. Again, some people will use a phthalo green. So this is a cool green. Um, cobalt teal is another color that I like to have. And then a Mars black. Hey, where's my white? Titanium white. You will use a lot of like, you may use another kind of white. I like titanium white because it's really um, opaque. Uh, so you're going to go through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of white. So if you're out buying paint, um, I would get small tubes of your color and then a giant tube of white. So basically in your colors, you should have your primary colors. So your yellow, your red, and a blue. Okay, if you can't afford to get warm and cool versions of each, then try to get what's just called a primary yellow, a primary red, and a primary blue. Get your white, like I said, and then I know that when I we did the watercolor, I told you I don't like to use black, but I do use black in acrylic painting all the time. Um, so do get some black, but you won't need nearly as much black as you need white. And um brown so i can probably make some browns from the colors that i have here but i do generally like to get uh, a warm brown so like a burnt sienna and a cool brown like a burnt umber which is kind of like a dark pepsi colored brown okay um i've got my pencil and my eraser around just in case i got cut off um, I have a container for um, my water, and this is one of these containers that squishes in on itself, so it's portable. Um, and theoretically, you're supposed to be able to rest your paintbrush on there so that you don't leave it in here getting damaged. Um, I end up leaving my paintbrushes in here uh, quite a bit more so than I would with other types of paint because I don't want the acrylic paint to draw on the bristles because it will ruin the bristles. Acrylic paint is basically made out of plastic and so you have to be really careful with it. And that being said, um, you want to make sure that you're wearing clothes that you don't mind getting messy. So like maybe put an apron on if you don't have any clothes that you can afford to get bits of paint on because acrylic paint is actually used for painting fabric. Once it dries, it pretty much sets and you won't get it out. And also along that lines, you probably want to put something underneath your painting. Like if you're going to be working on an easel, put something on the floor like a old bed sheet or a shower curtain or something like that. And if you're going to be working on your kitchen table, then put some newspapers down or Again, a bed sheet, something that you can get messy um, so that you don't actually get paint on your furniture or your floor and the people you live with don't get mad at you. Uh, so paintbrushes. I use totally different paintbrushes for acrylic than I do for watercolor. I like to use really nice, soft, absorbent brushes for watercolor and generally speaking, round brushes. I usually use flat brushes for acrylic and acrylic's one of those things where I kind of think like almost the cheaper the brush the better 
because I think that acrylic you're gonna end up wrecking your brush anyway eventually and I don't see the big advantage in using like a $50 brush over a $12 brush I don't know maybe you do maybe you would argue with me about that so I usually have some flat brushes I usually have some like pretty stiff brushes too um, for creating textures and like different sizes so I've got a nice one inch um, brush here and then like half inch brush well number four brush which is approximately a half inch and then a, a smaller brush here I do have detail brushes I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background <laughs> um, so I have some detail brushes uh, if you don't have a detail brush that's fine if you have a good flat brush you can use the corner of the brush to get fairly detailed work and if you want to go more detailed than that then you can maybe use something like a toothpick or I don't know I've actually cut my own hair to use again I don't know if you want to do that uh, palette knife you don't need one um, but if you have one you might want to play with it you can both mix your colors your paints with this and you can actually apply paint and swish it around on your canvas like that um, you could experiment maybe with the plastic picnic knife or something like that if you want to but you don't have to and then a palette so I don't have one of those fancy ones that I stick my thumb through because I'm usually just like too lazy to hold it so I usually keep it on the table um, any kind of like plastic plate or something whatever you want to use you might even want to put like a sheet of parchment paper or wax paper on it and then at the end of the day you can um, throw out if, if you don't mind wasting the paint you can throw it out um, if you have something like a like those Gladware picnic boxes, they work really well because they have a lid and then you can put them on and then your paint doesn't dry out. When you are cleaning your palettes and things like that, at the end of the day, just make sure that you're wiping off all of the excess paint with a paper towel um, and throwing that in the garbage, I should point out. Always make sure you have some paper towel with you or, or a rag. Um, I use paper towel because I can just throw it away but often I actually usually forget to bring it and then I wipe things on my jeans um what was the thing yeah so make sure that you wipe off all the ex excess paint and throw it in the garbage and don't wash it down the sink because it will clog your drains and then people will be annoyed with you okay so I think that I'm going to start this off by doing what's called an underpainting and what an underpainting is, is it's kind of what it sounds like. It's it's a painting underneath your overpainting. And what's the point of that, Ms. Hendry? Well, it just kind of creates more depth and richness. You don't have to do this, but I figured I might as well do this just to show you the process if you want to do it. And basically I'm gonna do I'm gonna start by creating what's called a ground. And a ground is sort of a light layer of color on your this is referred to as a substrate, and a substrate is whatever you're painting on. Make sure that before you start, you get rid of all your little eraser bits. Anyway, so I'm probably going to go in with like a, a light brown, kind of yellowy brown. Um, just water my paint down and cover the whole thing. And then I'm going to go in over top of that and create some of my values. And so my underpainting will definitely be monochromatic. And once we get that done, then we can start talking about different color schemes.